Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about Days Gone Bad. It's book one in the Vesic series. It's by Eric R. Asher. Um, it is a dark urban fantasy. <clears throat> Damien, the main character in this series, Damien Vesic, is a, a necromancer. And this takes place in and around uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So... Damien runs a magic shop in the city, and uh, to the uninitiated, it's full of junk. To those who actually uh, can do and see into the magical world, uh, it is actual, real magic. Uh, he, uh, in his shop, he has three fairies that live with him, little flying fairies, wings, and all that other stuff. The mother is Kara. Uh, her son is Foster, and Foster's wife is Idine, and they live in his shop with a couple of, um, I believe it's Ku Shi, but I could be wrong. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on the uh, Gaelic pr pronunciation there. Uh, they're uh, uh, supernatural guard dogs, uh, green fur and all that stuff. <clears throat> his uh, Damien's sister it happens to be a vampire. And a strange vampire at that, because of the way she was turned to a vampire, she doesn't have some of their their weaknesses. Like, she can go into a church, where most other vampires can't. Um, <clears throat> I mean, one of the first things you find out about um, Damien and about the series is that <clears throat> Damien is, is not really a hero. He is an anti-hero. Uh, and... Um, while his actions end up being heroic, uh, it's not like he's being heroic for the greater good uh, as, as much as he's being heroic to um, save himself or to take revenge on someone he doesn't like, etc., etc. Um, so one of the first things that happened in the series is that... Um, Damien's sister shows up at his shop and demands that he do something about uh, her ex's uh, what upcoming wedding. Uh, and this is where, I, when I first started reading this, I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to like this guy. Um, the thing with an antihero is that uh, the, the antihero is not doing things for the greater good. They're not doing things because of heroic, uh, uh, their heroic nature, if you will. They're not Steve Rogers. They're not Captain America, who is, you know, I can do this all day and I'm here to stick up for the little guy. It's, I'm here for me. Um, now, it can be, if it's done well, you have someone like Caiaphas Kane from the Caiaphas Kane novels by Sandy Mitchell. Um, in the 40k uh, Warhammer 40k universe, they're entertaining, they're funny. Um, Kane is out for himself and for his own selfish interests, and he just happens to save people along the way. And he has this huge reputation for being um, a, a, a stalwart hero and defender of the Empire and all that stuff, where he'd rather um, hide in a foxhole until it's all over. Um <clears throat> But he's he's fun. He's he he's engaging. He's he's uh, a good read. Where you have, um, when I was uh, as I said when I started reading this, I'm thinking, oh no, I'm not going to like this guy because right at the start he did not come off as being very likable. Um, it wasn't until I got a few pages in that actually it 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 turned out that. Um, it was a well-written antihero where he is um, sympathetic. Uh, I recently read a book, and it's um, the review is on my YouTube channel. Um, it was uh, Infernal Justice. Uh, it was the first book in the Ethan Drake series. Ethan Drake is also an antihero, uh, and Ethan Drake is a piece of garbage and. Uh, not worth uh, not worth reading. Whereas Damien Vesic, it started out a little bit 
like I was, I was, it, it seemed like it was going in that direction. Um, but it ended up, uh, maybe it was like a stumble and it recovered beautifully. Um, and, uh, I, I in, very much enjoyed reading it. Um, <clears throat> so to get further into it, I, I went to, um, Eric R. Asher, um, his website and looked at Days Gone Bad at book one and, uh, read the description that it has there. And, yeah, it's really the the description is not very good for this book because it says uh, Damien Vesic is no is no hero, at least not according to the magical community that turns a blind eye to his battles against evil. Um, actually, let's do this. <clears throat> so he chalks it up as one more thankless mission when he's forced to stop his vampire sister from murdering her ex's entire bridal party. Infiltrating the ceremony to protect the innocent, Damien uncovers something even more sinister than a massacre. With the help of his berserk fairy friend, he may need to prevent an unholy union between ancient demons and the walking dead. Damien has one chance to stop his sister and ruin the wedding before one hell of an after party dooms the world. <clears throat> yes, some of this happens. No, it has nothing to do with the wedding. He does that as a favor to his sister. His sister is pissed off because her ex is getting married. Uh, and so he goes and he plays a prank on the wedding. Um, but the wedding is a, is a side note that has almost nothing to do with the entire rest of the plot. Um, uh, he doesn't infiltrate the wedding and find something there that's like, oh no, doomsday. No, that comes completely separate. He's in his shop and somebody shows up to try to kill him. That's it. And that's how the ball starts, starts rolling here. Um, it has nothing to do with his sister's ex's wedding. That's just, um, a, hey, brother, I, I hate my ex. He's getting married. Can you do something about the wedding? And he's like, sure, sis. Gotcha. Um, but we do have, um, um, uh, because of the vampire angle and the vampires are trying to bring back a demon, uh, Damien's master who taught him all about magic. She shows up and, and gets involved in the, in the plot and trying to, to, um, prevent the resurrection of this demon. Um, I, as I said, I enjoyed this. I, uh, was afraid that I wasn't going to, but it, it, um, uh, ended up, changing my mind um first few pages it was a little bit of a rocky start there but after that went smooth i enjoyed it there are a couple of places where it's like hmm that's interesting i guess um <clears throat> this is very different from uh so one of my complaints about the book uh, monster hunter international monster hunters international uh was that uh, the power level of the vampires seemed to fluctuate. Um, and in this book, they don't seem to fluctuate, which is nice. It keeps things on an even keel. Uh, it's not like one page a vampire is taken out really easily. And the next page, the vampire is, is nigh unkillable. It's not like that. It's very much more even in its treatment of the, the, um, capabilities of the magical creatures um but because of some of the things that happened um you kind of get a feeling that there's not a lot of um, danger for the main character in in a couple of ways i don't i don't really want to go into too much spoiler in the details but he does have very thick plot armor just saying um, there are a couple of things that seem to um, turn out more in his favor than they should have. Uh, and, um, you're not quite sure who is the good guy and who is the bad guy exactly when, because there's, there's a, a little bit of muddiness in the plot uh, as far as not from the perspective of the, um, 
of the characters, but from an outside perspective. The characters, uh, they're in the dark. They're trying, they're struggling to figure out what's going on. Um, and they're working towards the, the conclusion that they think, uh, is, is, uh, best in their situation. Whereas from the outside, because you see what the author is, is, um, constructing, um, you notice that there's plot lines that are somewhat illogical. Um, anyway, that being said, I still enjoyed it. It was still pretty good. I, um, I got a, a, um, bundle on this one. So I have two more books in the series. I've already started the next one. It's already looking to be pretty, um, uh, enjoyable. So, uh, I plan to go ahead with that. There are actually quite a few, uh, books in this particular series. Um, I'm, I'd have to look at how many there. Oh, 20. Looks like there's 20 books in the series, give or take. Anyway, uh, that being said, let me know what you thought. Like, comment, subscribe, all that other stuff. If you've read this, if you, if you haven't, let me know what you think kind of of the, the premise of, of this thing where we have this necromancer living in, in, uh, in St. St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and, uh, uh, once again, this isn't usually my genre. I, I tend to like high fantasy more than, than like these dark urban fantasies, but there's still a lot to like in this one. That being said, that's it for today. Um, until next time, enjoy what you're reading.